Looking at the Gilded Age, it can be very tempting to think of the dire straits or dire condition in which the lower classes live. We know from the novels of Edith Wharton and we know from the satires of Mark Twain and the satires of Torsten Veblen that the upper classes lived in opulence and did very well. So it's very easy to be dismissive and say, well, the lower classes were in a terrible state. This isn't necessarily the case, and the lower classes organized to improve their condition and organized to grow their own power. They did this in, in labor unions that started to develop. And one of the most famous organizations was Tammany Hall. You see a cartoon here by a guy called Thomas Nast, and he was famous for lampooning, for documenting, for drawing cartoons of this man, Boss Tweed. Boss Tweed was the most famous leader of Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall itself is just a building, just a hall, but it was the headquarters of the Democratic Party in New York City. And it was labeled Tammany Hall. So all of the Democratic Party organization in New York City was labeled Tammany Hall. This was Tammany Hall politics. And its most famous leader was William Tweed, otherwise known as Boss Tweed. He was the political boss. So what we start to see is political organization. And if you turn on the TV, you can see Democratic Party, Republican Party, you can see nominees, you can see party chairmen, and this is exactly the kind of politics that Boss Tweed was famous for. So what did this mean for the lower classes? Well, what this meant was that they could organize to get jobs, they could organize to participate in construction projects. As industry was developing, there was a lot of money flowing. And who would get the city's contract to build a Brooklyn Bridge? Who would get the city's contract to do the sewage works in New York City? Boss Tweed made sure by getting elect by having his candidates elected as alderman as city council member as mayor every single position as city commissioner they would direct the contracts to the contractors and workers and people and jobs to and those positions to people they favored so that way they held political power and they held financial power and while this was obviously corrupt and the best workers didn't necessarily get the best jobs or the best companies didn't get the best jobs. It actually worked for several decades. It worked reasonably well in that people, immigrant communities, especially the Irish, were able to grow their political power base, were able to grow their economic power base, and were able to benefit by being guaranteed jobs, guaranteed work, and guaranteed a stake in the growing economy in New York. Eventually, however, the corruption became too much, and Boss Tweed, which, as he's shown in these cartoons, is growing getting fat on corruption and graft and greed and whereas if you were an Irish immigrant family and your cousin was able to get you a job in the police force or you were able to get a construction job building the Brooklyn Bridge you would see how the system that Boss Tweed put in place would work for you eventually other ethnicities were locked out other political parties and forces came along and said they wanted to reform this and have reform was a big word of the day they would bring in a proper civil service where there would be a civil service test and people would get city police fire other jobs on a fair basis and eventually Thomas Nast and other journalists showed how corrupt Boss Tweed was and eventually he was prosecuted and a very famous story how he went on the run and hid out in Spain and eventually he was caught when somebody recognized him from one of these famous Nast cartoons. So again, Tammany Hall is a fascinating story. It tells us a lot about our politics today, and it also tells us that the Gilded Age was a period of activity not just for the upper classes, but also for the lower classes.